Hello there, I am Minefiend, this is a Secret World MMO, and this is Little Boo. We're at the Morning Light Camp now, which is out here along the Langmoor Trail, um, just behind Fletcher Road, uh, in between that, well, in between Fletcher Road and Solomon Road actually, uh, near the Blue Ridge Tunnel. And we've made it over here from Kingsmouth, we've done more or less all the quests down here. There's still at least one left to do. But now we're going to meet <laughs> quite the character and he's voiced by a very famous voice actor. I'll wait until after the cutscene and see if you, during the cutscene, see if you can figure out who he is because He's done quite a good job with putting on um, a voice. We'll see. He's Shea Garcia Hansen. If you remember, uh, during the police station, we looked at some police records. And Shea G Garcia Hansen um, had been arrested and was tired of being put down by, air quotes, the man. <laughs> and uh, all that lot. And um, he's definitely been noticed by Bannerman. But since then, they've moved the the camp out here out of the way so let's see, let's talk to him now we're going to do the quest rolls downhill bring this to the rendezvous point and get the hell back to dodge don't stop for red lights don't stop for a smoke don't stop for a piss comprende amigo wait wait what the fuck wait we're not done amigo listen don't fuck this up. Focus. Focus. Leave this circle and you gotta watch your back. Plenty of creepy crawlers out there. No voodoo to keep you safe. But this is what you signed up for, right? There's more to the morning light than clean living, handing out flyers on the subway and trying to get vertical with Miss Dreadlocks from Orientation Week. We're harbingers of change, dude. We're prophets of mutation. We're disciples of doom. But change won't happen unless we up and act. Sure, Rome wasn't built in a single day, but it sure as hell wasn't built by deadbeat procrastinators lazing around on their asses, smoking weed, either. Just get it done. Bees on me 24-7, dude. That's how this thing works. Shit rolls downhill. And the boss has made it pretty clear this is important, and it's got to be taken care of now, not later. Not when you feel like it. Toot fucking sweet. Comprende? Everybody's got to pull their fucking weight, dude. Anybody else is just dead weight. So that's Shea Garcia Hansen. Did you recognize who did the voice for him? Well, he's voiced by an actor named Armin Shimmerman, um, and two of his most famous roles will definitely be um, Quark the Ferengi from the various Star Trek series, and um, my personal favourite, of course, uh, without question, um, Principal Snyder from uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, he's not exactly a nice guy is he? Um, he says bees putting pressure on him um, and of course with all things as the big man puts the pressure on him he squeezes us even smaller men so let's look at the quest rolls downhill a courier must make a speedy delivery of an important package but many dangers lurk outside the safety of the camp if you remember he told him to be careful once he's outside these wards um, a courier was sent with a package for a person only referred to as B. It seems very important and even more urgent. Uh, he can't have gotten far. Following him would be easy. So let's follow the courier. Okay. Let's see if we can follow the courier then. Well, he definitely didn't get far, did he? <laughs> Just a couple of hundred yards. Fuck me. What the fuck was that thing? 
Jesus Christ, man, I'm shaking like a fucking leaf. Oh, fuck. The package. Fucking monster ran off with the fucking package. Jesus Christ, Shay's gonna fucking freak when he finds out. And Beaumont, man, fucking Beaumont. Shit rolls downhill. I'm a dead man walking, a dead man. So B is definitely Beaumont. Well, we've hey, encountered hey. Beaumont, haven't we? You got, like, superpowers, right? If you get that package back, you're in, man. In like fucking Flynn. At least we've seen Beaumont. Beaumont hasn't seen us. And the courier says if we get this package back, um, we'll be in. We'll, so we'll be in with the morning light if we if we can get this back. They'll maybe trust us. So it says the wounded Wendigo ran off with the package. The trail of blood is it left behind should be le uh, lead uh, straight to its location. So follow the Wendigo's blood trail. It's interesting it says a wounded Wendigo there. I never thought of it as wounded. I always thought the blood trail I was following really was his blood. <laughs> Which, because I mean I didn't really see him hit back but I suppose he did. There was a big spurt of blood while it, while it attacked him. Um, Wendigo are interesting. They're uh, in several mythologies. Usually they're uh, evil spirits of people that have um, been punished and transformed because they've been cannibalistic. But we'll talk more about Wendigo throughout the series. So now we've got to follow the trail of blood. Well, the first one's over here. And it's heading in this direction. Some more on the tree here. And up the hill. Some more. Onto the path. Yep. Definitely still some blood. That's a lot. And there's the Wendigo ahead of us. Tier 3. The injured, injured Wendigo protects the package and probably won't give it up voluntarily. Prepare for a fight kill the sanguine wendigo to retrieve the package okay well it's got 1562 hit points if you hover over the target analysis it'll tell you something about the creature this target will not attack until it is provoked okay it's a target rank 2 challenge rating normal for us at this stage uh, this target is important to a mission and this target can be defeated by a lone agent so uh, it tells you everything you need to know, you know, should I attack it, will it stomp me? It says, well, you've got a good chance against it, so let's try it. Uh oh, we're stunned. And it stunned us again. There we go. The Wendigo is dead. Right. So now we've got to pick up the package that it's dropped. The package is there. But while I'm here, just because I know where I am, and it's rare. I'm going to take a look down here because there are rare monsters, rare bosses in the game, and it's not not there. And one of them is on this beach here. It's a giant bear called Solomon's Omen. There are four in, four rare bosses in Kingsmouth. Mr. Freezy is one of them. Um, Solomon's Omen is another, and that's actually it appears on this beach um, but it must have been killed sometime within the last three hours by a player and it won't respawn again for another three hours so we're going to pick up the package the 
package should be returned to the courier. Maybe he'll shed some light on who this mysterious B is. Well, he did already say. I was listening. <laughs> Return the package to the courier. Okay, well, that we can do. But there will be a little detour because I think, if I remember rightly, there might be a piece of law up in this corner of the woods. If you follow the path round here, you're heading back towards the courier. But if you head right along, there we go, yeah, right along this wall. There's another piece of law over here. So let's just pick this up as well while we're here. It's regarding the 1712 fire. Out of sight but not forgotten, in the towns along the coast, people told stories of a foul-tempered and arrogant man by the name of Beaumont, who passed through telling anyone who would listen about the bastards up in Kingsmouth who banished him twice for no reason. Beaumont swore revenge. Banished twice? This confused the Illuminati. The eldest members of the society remembered a man named Beaumont coming to Kingsworth four decades past. Yet this uh, most recent Beaumont was not old enough to be him. Once invoked, there is nothing so powerful as the curiosity as the children as the Iron Pyramid. Um, if you remember the story of the 1712 fire, then Basically, somebody set this fire to distract Illuminati. Um, af after the year before, they threw um, a person out of the town. So, Beaumont is there, has been there before. He's been there twice now. And yet, he doesn't seem to have aged while he's been there. Very, very interesting. Very, very key piece of information. So let's get back to this courier now. We'll, we'll sprint from here. Why not? That's awesome, man. Jesus Christ, I figured I was done for. I... Uh, am I making the delivery? Must have fucked up my leg real good. I can barely walk. It's not far. Just over in the tunnel. There's a drop-off point in a crevice in the wall where we leave all packages. Well, nobody needs to know, right? Just you and me. I'll put in a good word with Shay. I'll put in the fucking word with Shay. Deal? Okay, that's a deal then. We'll deliver this for you and you get us in into the morning light. Okay. Courier's in injuries are too severe. Delivering the package for him could make Shay trust you, which might lead you to be. Place the package in the slot in the tunnel door. Because he does say there's a crevice in the tunnel wall, well, a bit of an odd crevice, but yes, <laughs> it's a tr tunnel door, and we can just put the package in through the door, so we'll use the slot. There we go, that's rolls downhill. Now we've got the achievement for the kindness of strangers, rolls downhill, uh, complete missions for the visitors in Solomon Island. Um, these are people. Uh, these are people that are not native to the area, but people who are just um, arrived with or previous, just previous to the fog. So let's send the report. See what Sonic has to say. One may have been tempted to peek inside the morning light package, but clearly you are seeing the long game. I dare say I am rubbing off on you. We shall learn more about the morning light by infiltrating them than by ripping open their mail. That sort of tactic attracts unwelcome attention. We're not sure of their angle yet, but spiritual good will it isn't. We still uh, we have nothing incriminating on their saviour, Philip Marcad, but this local leader, Shea, has a long list of infractions, theft, assault and smuggling. However, our real interest is in the one they call B, Sonic. And for that we got 13,440 XP. We got 16... 170 packs of Romana, we got two sequences of Solomon Island, and we get a friendship bracelet. The friendship bracelet um, is a wrist talisman. It gives us 10 hit rating, 106 health, and 72 attack rating. And if you look under the currently equipped one, we've got one that gives us 106 health and 72 attack rating, but it gives us 10 physical protection. Um, Physical protection versus hit rating. That's the choice you make with this one. Uh, I think I'll go. For, I think we'll we'll equip this one. We'll take the hit rating instead of the physical protection. I think. So let's collect it. 
and we look here and there it is if we press C you can see the one on our um, the major talisman here that's the one with the physical protection on but we're going to swap it out we're going to swap that out for this so I right click it and it swaps it automatically it's better than dragging it here because if you miss it'll say like do you want, are you sure you want to destroy it and sometimes um, you mistake that for when it says are you sure you want to bind this to you so you can lose items that way everybody does it at some point makes that mistake that's something I'm definitely going to sell this effigy we've got an effigy here um, that's the same sort of choice. Do we prefer magical protection or penetration rating? Well, I'd rather keep the penetration rating on the one we've got so that we don't want that one. The dice are exactly the same as the dice we've got, so we don't need those. Now that leaves the sword. Hmm. I'm going to come back to that in about two episodes time, swords so I'll leave that there for the, the time being alright let's get back to the morning light and we'll camp and we'll end the episode there yeah thanks man yep I could help you limp back there if you want you know you could lean on my shoulder are you sure? okay well you stay here curled up in a ball where it's not exactly safe then Right, now because we're here and it's the end of an episode, I'm going to talk to, I'm going to do Shay's dialogue uh, versions and we'll go through his, his dialogue trees. Come on Shay, what can you tell me about the morning light? Hell yeah, we're with the morning light. You've seen the flyers, you've seen our commercials, you've probably even talked to some of our good people. Can't escape the light, my friend. It's all fucking encompassing, like air. We're like air. Breathe it. So, some people feel a need to badmouth us. Big fucking deal. Happened to Jesus. Happened to the Buddha. It was bound to happen to Philip Marcard as well. There are some that won't even see the light, you know? They're jealous of those who do and they want to destroy it. I think that's really nice how, the, you know, the the crafting that's gone into this because the the group call themselves the morning light and as he says there there are some that won't even see the light so I if you buy into their well that's impressive <laughs> if you buy into their um, religious doctrine uh, then you are seeing the light which means you are smarter than other people listen to what we say and you'll be one of us you'll be better than the rest um, usual cult stuff oh and I'll also point out here if you look our buff from before is still active uh, these buffs are game time they don't run like when you get a buff for an hour it doesn't mean that if you only play for another 10 minutes and then log out you'll lose 50 minutes of your buff no you put that on and you get it for 50 minutes of game time so you could log on two days later and you still have the fit you know the, the minutes left uh, okay what else can you tell us about the morning light Morning light is about change, about improvement, about shedding our shells and, you know, sprouting wings. Like a motherfucking butterfly, my friend. We're all about freedom, about casting off our tired old lives and starting anew in the light of a new sun. And the end is coming, good buddy. We need to prepare. We need to help get it done. We can't sit and wait for the world to turn. No. We need to turn it. We need action. In the morning light, we're all about the action. We're all about making change happen and happen right now. So, yep, typical cult stuff still. You know, the end is coming. Abandon your life that you're unhappy with come to us you'll find happiness you'll find salvation okay can you tell us anything about the fog share we were you know 
just passing through with our little band of merry fucking hippies. When that shit rolled in from the sea, like whipped cream on a blueberry pie. Well, it's not like the fog caught us by surprise, no man. This is what we've been preparing for. The end of motherfucking days. This is what the morning light has been preaching for years. And now, <laughs> now we got the last laugh. We're laughing our asses off. This shit, this shit is exactly what we deserve. Can you tell me anything else about the fog? Being prepared, we didn't really lose anyone. Important. We had some dudes run off when it first happened, got themselves eaten alive, could hear them screaming in the night. I was like, good fucking riddance, man. They were traitors, cowards. They didn't see the light. They didn't see that we need this. The earth needs change. This is change. This is change for the better. That's a real nice person there, isn't it? Some guys run off and they can hear him screaming as they're eating. And he's happy about it. Shay, you're a low life. <laughs> can you tell me anything about the, else about the fog? So, we got stuff to keep us safe. We were prepared. Good voodoo man to protect those who believed, those who trusted my word, trusted the morning light. Here, we got everything we need. And we'll stay put until the end comes, and Markard himself leads us into the brave new world. Oh, I can't fucking wait. So Markad is the leader of the Morning Light, but Beaumont seems to be his boss, so let's ask him about Beaumont. Can you tell us anything about him, Shay? Beaumont's got a direct line with Markad himself, knows him personally. That's like knowing someone who knew Jesus, you know? A red telephone to our motherfucking savior. The Morning Light saved my life. Beaumont saved my life. Thirty years ago, when we met, I was a wreck. Strung out, man, and ready to roll over and die. Couldn't move forward, didn't have anything to live for. But the morning light, they gave me hope. They made me see that there's a future for those who believe in change. So she has been in the morning light for thirty years. Thirty years since he met, first met Beaumont. I don't remember the exact details of what happened around that time. I'm pretty sure I was in Amsterdam at some point, and then I woke up somewhere in Scotland, and after that, uh, I have a memory of being in Venice. At some point in there, Bowman grabbed a hold of me and yanked me back into reality. And all I have left from that time is a weird tattoo, a missing toe, and faith in the motherfucking morning light. Amen. <laughs> All he's got left is a weird tattoo and a missing, <laughs> missing toe. <laughs> uh, must have been quite the um, adventure you was on there. Do you know anything about the secret societies? So, you guys. You run around like you're young gods, like you rule the fucking planet. I gotta say, I thought I was arrogant back in the day, but I was nothing, nothing compared with you people. You take arrogance to a whole new level. So I'm guessing he's not a fan. What else can you tell me? Say what you will about the morning light, and it's probably all true but from what I hear about your secret societies we've got nothing on you the Templars they burned down a city to destroy a single demon and what the fuck is up with that and the Illuminati look at what they did to this place puppet masters who don't give a shit about what happens to their puppets once they cut the strings don't know much about this dragon 
but I kind of like the idea of manufactured chaos. Change, man. It's what Morning Light is all about. But I'm betting the Dragon doesn't have the best interest of mankind on their minds. I bet it's all about getting power and wealth and control. Us? We're about setting the human spirit free. About making motherfucking butterflies, man. You're all about the butterflies, aren't you? Changing from what you was into what you can become. Anything else you can tell me about the secret societies? Go on. Pretend you're a hero that makes you feel good. Pretend you're all about saving mankind from the darkness. Go out there and fight evil. Get your little rewards, your ranks, your whatever. It probably makes you feel good, right? Like a rat on a wheel, round and round. Goes chasing that little bit of cheese. You're really something, aren't you? You dare criticize us, motherfucking hypocrites. So he really doesn't like the secret societies. Um, which, of course, you know, the hippie mentality. Those in power are obviously wrong and against you. You're oppressed. Um, but we're going to deal more with Shay in the next episode. So I'll say thank you very much for watching. Um, I've been Mindfiend. You guys, as always, have been wonderful. Bye for now.